The operator of Fukushima Daiichi has run into another problem in efforts to decommission the plant. Workers are trying to get a better idea of the situation inside the crippled reactors. And they are, they were hoping rather, to send in a robotic probe to help. But now they say they have to delay the plan for about a year. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company wanted the probe to check the plant's number one reactor. They were planning to send it into the flooded base of the reactor's containment vessel by the end of March. Three reactors suffered a meltdown in the March 2011 disaster. The operator thinks fuel that melted through the reactor cores is accumulating in heavily contaminated water at the bottom of the vessel. TEPCO's investigation is the most advanced at the number one reactor. Last March, investigators used elementary particles called muons to see through the reactor building, like in an X-ray test. It showed that no melted fuel was left in the core. A robot TEPCO sent into the containment vessel the next month failed to locate the fuel. The newer robot can move in water. But an inspection with an endoscope that revealed that the water is heavily clouded by rust and other elements. Now, that means that the probe won't be able to work properly, so officials with TEPCO and the government need to reconsider the plan. The officials are hoping to start removing melted fuel from their reactors by 2021. That task is considered the toughest part of the decommissioning process. It will take an estimated 30 to 40 years to complete. TEPCO officials say also that they want to send robots inside the number two and number three reactors, but the schedule for doing that is unclear. Decommissioning work is underway at three nuclear power plants in Japan. But there's a problem. There is no set plan for storing low-level waste. The mayor of Tokai Village says his community intends to be the first to allow such storage. NHK World's Daisuke Kamikubo has this exclusive report. I don't want to see the demolition work suspended. Tokai Village Mayor Osamu Yamada has thought long and hard about the Tokai Power Station. On the one hand, he wants to see its demolition completed. On the other, there is the question of what to do with its nuclear waste. The Tokai Power Station began operating in 1966. It was Japan's first commercial nuclear plant. Operations ended in 1998, and three years later, it became Japan's first commercial nuclear reactor to be decommissioned. The challenge? Figuring out how to dispose of its radioactive waste. For high-level waste, the central government takes care of it. But when it comes to low-level waste, the government has asked power utilities to deal with it themselves. There are three categories of low-level nuclear waste. L1, the highest, includes parts inside the reactor. L2 includes the reactor's containment vessel. And L3, the lowest, includes concrete and other structural debris from demolished buildings. The Japan Atomic Power Company operated the Tokai plant. Its plan is to permanently bury L3 waste at the plant site. First though, it needs local government approval. Now that the waste is limited to L3, I feel there's no alternative but to approve the plan. If this plan is finalized, Tokai Village will become the first municipality in the country to approve radioactive waste disposal. As for other low-level waste at the plant, there is still no consensus on what to do with it. Assistant Professor Kota Juraku at Tokyo Denki University sits on the National Council for Radioactive Waste. The question is, should the waste be disposed of on-site or off-site? Or should it be moved to other areas? These discussions ought to be led by the national government and seek a consensus. Other facilities being decommissioned have no plan at all for their radioactive waste. Meanwhile, there is no word from any level of government 
on how to deal with this challenge. Daisuke Kamikubo, NHK World. People in southwestern Japan are suffering through a brutal cold snap. The chill is so severe in some areas that water pipes have burst. Authorities are scrambling to deliver aid to residents, and they've mobilized the self-defense forces to help. NHK estimates that as of Tuesday morning, nearly 190,000 households were without water. Record low temperatures have caused pipes to leak and burst. One city in Fukuoka Prefecture saw the mercury plunge to minus 7 degrees Celsius. That is nearly 8 degrees below the seasonal average. Self-Defense Force personnel are delivering water to public facilities. I had no running water when I got up this morning. I've never experienced anything like this. I can't wash my clothes or do the dishes, and I can't cook. I hope the water will be back on as soon as possible. The shortages are a concern for doctors at this hospital. They say they need 15 to 20 tons of water a day for patients on artificial dialysis. It's a problem for everyone. We rely on water to treat patients, so we hope repairs will be done soon. Officials in one city in Fukuoka canceled all elementary and junior high school classes. They said they couldn't prepare any lunches for the students. The operator of a nuclear plant in central Japan is set to bring one of its reactors back online on Friday. It'll be the third restart since the government introduced new regulations following the 2011 Fukushima Daiichi accident. Kansai Electric Power Company plans to restart the number three reactor at the Takahama plant in Hui Prefecture if no problems are found with its control rods. The utility expects the reactor to achieve a self-sustaining chain reaction on Saturday. Officials plan to start generating and transmitting electricity on Monday. They hope to begin commercial operation late next month. Kansai Electric will use MOX fuel, a mixture of plutonium extracted from spent nuclear fuel and uranium. The mixed oxide fuel is part of Japan's fuel recycling system. It will be the first use of the fuel in Japan in about three years and 11 months. Last April, a court in Hukui issued an injunction to keep the number three and number four reactors at Takahama offline. But the decision was reversed last month after Kansai Electric filed an objection. The utility plans to load fuel into the number four reactor on Sunday and restart it as early as late February. The operators of a nuclear plant in central Japan say a reactor they've just restarted now has a self-sustaining reaction. They say it will soon be generating power. Governors of neighboring prefectures are not happy. Kansai Electric Power Company restarted reactor three at the Takahama plant in Fukui prefecture. This is the third reactor restarted in Japan under tougher regulations adopted after the Fukushima crisis in 2011. Company representatives say it will start generating power on Monday as long as its control rods and other equipment are working properly. They plan to resume commercial operation late next month. The governors of two neighboring prefectures are unhappy. The company restarted the reactor without their consent. 
We must act responsibly for current and future generations. I, for one, have great anxiety and doubts. Mikazuki said his prefecture will urge the government and the company more strongly to take safety measures. People in western Japan are still dealing with the after effects of last weekend's record cold spell. Freezing temperatures burst pipes across the region. And nearly 120,000 households are without tap water. One city has a costly solution. NHK World's Jung Sil Kim has the story. People in Dazaifu City in Kyushu got a bit of relief as warmer weather thawed pipes. But on Wednesday, they saw their taps run dry again, this time because officials cut off the supply. The rapidly rising temperatures resulted in new ruptures and the loss of a lot of water. We're trying to avoid a prolonged water stoppage. Maintenance crews are having a tough time spotting leaks. The region's aging population means there are a lot of abandoned houses to check. And even when they find the source, finding the valve is another challenge. Residents are frustrated. I need drinking water for my children. I hope water will be restored as soon as possible. This is my third round today. All I need is water, not money. Leaks sprang up right across Kyushu, and water levels inside reservoirs fell rapidly. But the largest city of Fukuoka managed without cutting service. A backup reservoir was introduced decades ago after the city suffered a major drought. Tokyo is the only other Japanese city with a backup. It's a costly solution for smaller municipalities. Jung Sil Kim, NHK World. To Japan's highest waterfall have enjoyed an unexpected treat. They were able to see the falls in the western prefecture of Wakayama freeze ahead of schedule. The site is called Nachinotaki and it's 133 meters high. A Shinto shrine was built nearby to honor the flowing water as a deity. Officials there say the temperature around the waterfall dropped to minus 5 degrees Celsius in the morning. A priest at the shrine discovered early Monday that the basin had frozen over. Usually it freezes around the end of February. I think it's the first time it's gotten like this in January. I was lucky to be able to see it, so I'm happy. The waterfall is part of the sacred sites and pilgrimage routes in the key mountain range, which are designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The U.S. government official says activity near a North Korean missile site could mean Pyongyang will conduct the test launch within a couple of weeks. Analysts believe the North is getting ready to test a long-range ballistic missile, but is calling it a satellite launch. The official told NHK on Thursday that U.S. satellite images show increased activity at the site. The location in question is in Tonchandi, in the country's northwest. The launch pad is currently covered, which has also been the case before previous missile launches. Researchers at Johns Hopkins University in the U.S. say the satellite images indicate North Korea is in the early stages of preparing for a launch. They say the construction of a shelter 11 meters wide and 29 meters high at an engine test site appear to have been completed as of January 25th. The structure is large enough to house the first stage of a rocket. Japanese officials are also on alert. We cannot rule out the possibility that North Korea will resort to some kind of provocative act without prior notice, such as a ballistic missile launch. The defense minister is believed to have issued an order to shoot down any missiles or debris. The ministry has not made an announcement regarding such an order. Officials say they don't want Pyongyang to know how they are responding to the possible threat. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has convened a National Security Council meeting for the second day in a row. 
Ministers agreed to take all possible precautions and work with the U.S., South Korea and other countries to monitor developments. Wherever you might be in the world right now, an international group of scientists says it is still three minutes to midnight. The Bulletin of Atomic Scientists reports that the hands of the doomsday clock, which symbolizes the likelihood of global disaster, remain exactly where they were a year ago. The scientists cited some positive developments the past year, over the past year, including the deal to curb Iran's nuclear program and the Paris Climate Change Agreement. But they also mentioned setbacks, such as ongoing conflicts in Ukraine and Syria and a nuclear test by North Korea. The decision not to move the hands of the doomsday clock in 2016 is not good news, but an expression of grave concern that the situation remains largely the same. Scientists created the doomsday clock about 70 years ago. The hands are now closer to midnight than they've been since the end of the The mental war. health of workers has become a pressing issue for many Japanese firms. A revision to a law now requires managers to carry out regular stress checks of employees and address any problems they find. That is another chore for bosses, but it's also an opportunity for services that offer to eliminate tension in the workplace. One challenge is to identify who is at risk. Workers at this nursing care facility soon know if they are feeling the strain. All they need to do is talk to their smartphone. <laughs> they are using a software app that measures stress levels. It's not what they say, it's how. The app analyzes the frequency and tone of voice to check the person's mental condition. Personnel managers can read the results online. The app makers say this gives bosses an objective perspective of workers' well-being. These days, many workers report to their bosses via email and telecommuters work from home. These working styles can rob managers of a chance to talk face to face. The smartphone app is an answer to such problems. Nursing care providers are struggling to find enough personnel. Services like this may be one way to keep their staff happy and on the payroll. It's hard to read people's feelings, but if you can see the results like that, it's simple. Every morning, office workers at this home builder are greeted by calm music and chirping birds. The company uses a background music service to ease stress in the workplace. The soothing tunes continue throughout the day. Managers introduced the piped music after staff complained of stress. They said the office was too quiet. I can now work in a relaxed mood. It used to be frighteningly quiet, with the tapping of keyboards the only sound you could hear. When the workday ends, a familiar fanfare is the cue for everyone to go home. Many Japanese still feel obliged to work overtime. The end-of-day music makes it easier for employees to say goodbye. The housing maker says overtime claims have fallen 15 percent since it introduced the office soundtrack. Healthy workers, both in body and mind, are the source of the company's vitality. It's very important for the company as a whole. The service is streamed by an audio cable company. It offers 86 channels for business clients. The mellow themes include improving concentration, relaxation, and refreshing workers' moods. The company says it has received inquiries from more than 5,000 businesses. We thought the service would be just right for companies having problems with workplace stress.
Health officials say at least 60% of Japan's workforce is facing heavy stress and anxiety. Creating a more relaxed work environment could be an important step to bringing that figure down.